Welcome to BioVivacious. BioVivacious is a learner-centric YouTube channel dedicated to make fundamental concepts of biosciences clear, vibrant, and exciting. I'm sure you will enjoy this session and find the presentation stimulating. Today, we are going to focus on graphical representation of data. As students of biosciences, you will be generating a lot of data. And today, we try to give a clue on how to represent this data graphically. So let us begin understanding bar diagrams. So in order to understand bar diagrams, let us take an example of a student named Meenakshi. So the marks Meenakshi obtained in the final examination is given below physics 40 chemistry 35 biology 38 and mathematics 42 so this physics chemistry biology mathematics these subjects are independent variable they are not going to change so therefore independent variable we take it on the x-axis whatever mark she has got will be considered as the dependent variable which we take it on the y-axis so therefore uh, we raise rectangles for every independent variable. So the, therefore the magnitude of the data is represented by the length of the bar. So we should keep the same width between two bars and all bars should be arranged from left to right. Okay, and uh, if the bar should be rest on the same line and this line is called the baseline. Very good. So in the previous graph, you have learned how to draw a simple bar diagram. Two other forms of bar diagrams are multiple and component bar diagrams. So these kind of bar diagrams are drawn when you have to make comparison of data. Suppose you want to compare with the marks that Meenakshi got in the last two examinations. So you can see that we have erected two different rectangles in the case of a multiple bar diagram that is represented in the first graph. In the second graph, we have made them as part of a single bar. So that is a component. It has become a component of a single bar. So that is known as a component bar diagram. By using this slide, my another intention is to show that uh, either towers can be raised vertically as well as horizontally so the, you have the freedom in raising it vertically as well as horizontally so you can use your creativity to represent the data pie chart is another excellent way to represent the data let us consider the monthly expenditure of meenakshi so for various headings she spends a total of about 12000 rupees per month this whole data has to be distributed in 360 degrees of the circle. So therefore, how do we find that? Hostel fees is 5000 rupees divided by 12,000 multiplied by 360. So whatever value you get, that will be represented in the circle for hostel fees. Similarly, you can calculate for college fees, laundry, internet, etc., etc. So this is how we draw a pie chart. As you explore, you can also represent the data inside in the pie chart. You can represent the percentage of expenditure also in the pie chart. These will be other variations of the pie chart. Another way to represent data is by using a histogram. Histogram, it looks similar to bar diagram, but the main difference is in bar diagram, we were representing data in one dimensional. Only the length was being represented. Whereas in histogram, it is a two dimensional representation. We bother about length as well as width. So, if the width represent the class interval. So, you, look at, you can look at the, the data that is given there. If the class intervals are 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, etc. So, therefore, if the width of the tower should be representative of the class interval. Now, if the frequency is represented as the length of the rectangle. I am sure you enjoyed drawing a histogram. 
Now suppose you have a class interval which is unequal. So pay attention to the data that is given there. 0 to 10, 10 to 20, the class interval is 10. But in, when it comes to the next one, 20 to 40, the class interval is 2. 40 to 60, the class interval is twice. And also 60 to 40, uh, 60 to 100, the class interval is about four times. So in such case, how do we draw histogram for an unequal class interval? So remember, in the previous section, we have seen that the width should be representing the class interval. So appropriate correction has to be done. So if you look at the table, for a class interval of 10, we have assigned a value of 1. In the case of 20 to 40, there are two such class intervals. So therefore, the factor is 2. When you come to the last uh, row, in the 60 to 100, the class interval, the factor is 4. Divide the frequency with this factor. So whatever data that you get when you divide, that will be the corrected frequency represented by the height of the rectangle. So accordingly, you can see that in the histogram which is do, uh, uh, drawn below is representing uh, in the frequency of the data. What is important in a histogram is, suppose you make a cutout of this histogram, you should be able to balance this histogram. So it has to have a center point of balancing. That is the most important aspect about a histogram. Two variations of a histogram is, one is a frequency polygon and a frequency curve. How to draw this frequency polygon and frequency curve? So you are expected, first of all, to draw a histogram. After drawing the histogram, in each of this tower, identify the midpoint and you mark it with an X sign. Suppose you connect all these midpoints by using a straight line, you will get a frequency polygon. Observe the figure. Suppose you connect all these midpoints with a curve, freehand curve, you will get a frequency curve. You can observe in the figure, all the dotted lines represent in the frequency curve. Though there are other forms of graphical representation of data, we are not going to focus on them at the moment. So, let us look at what are the advantages of graphical representation. So, understand that graphs gives more a striking representation of the data. So, you are able to grasp it in just one look. And we can say that it will make a complex data into a, it simplifies. You are able to understand from a simple look and uh, you are able to compare data. You have seen from the example of mean actually getting marks into uh, different two uh, different examinations. And it has got a universal applications. So it, ha it has applications in any way in the world. It is meaningful. Next is next advantage is, uh, as I mentioned, it gives more information in a single view you are able to grasp it and additionally it saves a lot of time and labor though there are many advantages for graphical representation a graph also has its own limitations we are able to draw conclusions but you know it is always better to use the actual data for any calculation and we should know that graphs can represent only approximate values and uh, it can be used for compar comparative studies but we cannot use graphs for further analysis we cannot use graphs for you know finding standard deviation or uh, finding mean etc we cannot use it basically it is useful only for common people and its utility for an expert is in fact limited so these are the things that you need to understand about graphical representation of data i hope you have enjoyed this session on the fundamentals of graphical representation of data one of the important topic that you need 
uh, as a beginning session in biostatistics. Thank you very much for watching this channel. We shall meet again with another concept in biostatistics. Thank you very much.